Our friend and videographer Andres is starting his woodworking workshop and we decided to surprise him with a custom workbench. At first we had the idea of making the same style bench as we have in our workshop. However, it would be better to make one with a built-in router table making it more versatile and space efficient option. To make it we will have to do quite a lot of CNC operations and some of the parts will require tiling. In the process I will show you how we do the tiling operation by having the CNC router next to the wall. But before we can start slicing up the sheets we first have to design the workbench. The idea is to have a router table set up with drawers and cabinets on the side of the workbench and a spacious work surface with an easy to access shelf under it on the other side. The thing that would be handy is having the dog holes not only at the work surface but also at the sides of the workbench. This would simplify working on larger sheet components. Once you have the concept ready, it's just a matter of spending a few evenings working out the details and preparing the design for the CNC operations. As a warm up we are starting with the easiest parts of the build, the drawers and door panels for the router table section of the workbench. For these operations I'm using a 3mm straight flute router bit at 25,000 RPMs at 3.5,000 mm per minute feed rate. This allows us to make all the contour cuts in one pass and avoid using the support tabs. After all the parts are made we can simply pop them out of the sheet and continue with the next components. In this case apart from a 12mm sheet and a couple of 15mm sheets. I'm using the same feeds and speeds as the 9mm sheets. The straight foot bit can cut even the 15mm sheets in one pass, saving a lot of CNC time and working on the support tabs, which is great for larger projects. To make the workbench we have to run 17 different CNC programs and saving a couple of minutes on each operation adds up quickly. Once the parts that fit on our CNC work surface are complete, we can start working on the larger components. We can make them using the traditional tiling approach, making the positioning holes in the spoil board, loading the sheets, recalibrating the z-axis and making the cuts for the first tile, after repositioning the workpiece and cutting the second tile till the components are finished. Once the 12mm parts are complete, I can work on the side component. This is more challenging since our material is barely big enough to fit the part, so I decided to use the screw holes in the corner joint for the positioning. Other than that, the operations went more or less the same sequence, cutting the first tile, repositioning and cutting the second tile. But the fun part is making the workbench's floor component and the work surface. Since those parts are considerably larger than the ones we made earlier, we have two options. Move the CNC from the wall or use the cutting approach I like to call flip tiling. Not sure if it's the correct term, but this is how it works. You load one half of the sheet on the CNC router, make all the necessary cuts, then rotate the workpiece by 180 degrees, reattach it to the work surface and cut the other side of the part. Setting up the flip tiling operations is very similar to the standard tiling operations. The only difference is flipping the component instead of sliding it forward. Let me know if you would like me to make an in-depth video on how to set up the flip tiling CNC operations with Fusion 360. At this point we have cut all of the workbench components and the last task is to cut the pockets for the router panel. When that is complete we are finally ready for the easy part, trimming the edges. The router table makes this task easier for the small parts like the drawer components, attachments and small panels. However, the larger parts require some attention with the palm router, especially when getting rid of the peach fuzz type shavings around the dog holes. It would be very challenging to get them rounded on the router table. Anyway, after all the component edges are trimmed nicely, we can start assembling the workbench. As the first step, I'm assembling the frame for the router cabinet and reinforcing it with a couple of screws. Then I can attach the router cabinet's back panel to the assembly. To make the process easier, I move the parts to the floor and reinforce the back panel with a couple of screws. To ensure they are flush with the tabletop surface, I had to countersink the holes. Now comes the tricky part, attaching the floor component. While placing the large part in the place, I also have to install the door panels. To do so, I partially attach the bottom panel and insert the doors. Then I can push the floor component in place and secure it with a handful of screws. 
Then it's time to attach the easy to access shelf. It's a nice feature since you can store all the necessary tools for the project within arm's reach while having the work surface clutter free. Now we can attach the side panel at the end of the assembly. Considering that my workshop floor isn't even, getting all the tenants in the mortise is tricky, but when the panel is in place we can start assembling the side of the workbench. So as the first side part I attach the router cabinet's wall and hammer it in place. This time I'm not rushing with the screw reinforcements, I want to make sure all the side parts fit in place. When the small side panel at the other end is installed comes the most satisfying part, attaching the remaining parts with the dovetail joinery. I always enjoy pushing the dovetail joints in place. Anyway, when one side of the workbench is complete, I'm countersinking the screw holes and securing the parts in place. Then I can roll the assembly upside down and use leverage points to rotate it around my workshop. To prevent damaging the parts, I'm placing a couple of offcuts between the assembly and the floor. Then I can flip the workbench to its side and attach all the components to the other side. When everything is in place, I slide the workbench into the middle of the shop and carefully lift it. Now we can install the work surface. Lining up all the finger joints around the bench did take a minute, but soon I can hammer the router cabinet joints in place. After the top is in place, I can countersink the joint reinforcement holes. While doing so, I remembered we have to install T-nuts at the bottom of the work surface, so I have to disassemble the top component, flip it to the other side and install the T-nuts. You might be wondering what we need these for. Well, it will make perfect sense later. When all the nuts are in place, I can reattach the work surface and reinforce the corner joints with a handful of screws. Now the workbench is assembled and we need to attach the caster wheels at the bottom so it's easier to move it around. For that I have to flip the bench on its side again. Originally I had the idea to attach the casters right in the corners, but I realized that the edge that goes around at the bottom of the workbench interferes with the caster movement. I guess it wasn't the brightest idea to cut the project before purchasing the wheels. Anyway, to fix the problem, I decided to attach the leftover chest tiles at the bottom of the table and install the caster wheels on top of them. When the wheels are in place, I add more offcut pieces under the workbench. These should make it easier to lift the table. Now the hardest part of the project is over, but we still have to assemble the drawers for the router cabinet, the fence and of course the dog hole attachments. When designing each project, I spend a lot of time making each part as simple as possible. Soon we have the drawers completed and we can start working on the router fence. Again, all we have to do is attach the rib components to the bottom of the fence and install the fence wall. Then we can secure the assembly with a handful of screws and assemble and attach the dust collector box. And just like that the fence is complete. However, for it to be useful, we have to attach the router to the workbench. So I'm adding the palm router base to the insert panel. Once that is done, we can install it in the pocket of the new workbench and secure it in place with a couple of screws. I'm placing a card jack under the router. It allows you to adjust the cutter position with high precision. To test the new workbench, I'm chamfering the edges of the star knobs that will be essential for securing the fence in place. After the first trimming operation on the new bench, we can add the M8 screws to the knobs and attach the fence to the workbench. To avoid having T-profile across the workbench, I added these small holes. We can place the fence above them and secure it with the star knobs. The slot allows you to move the fence considerable distance and the 5 T-nut holes allows you to move the fence further back. As the last task, we have to assemble the workbench attachments, the storage boxes, the camp clamps and of course the different size stoppers. They all have one thing in common, doubles. They allow you to attach them to the workbench and secure your workpiece. My favorite part is having the dog holes at the side of the workbench. It allows you to secure the sheet materials in more convenient position to work on the edges. Also, the large shelf is convenient for storing tools during the project and of course the large storage compartment under the table is great for storing materials or toolboxes. Now we have completed the workbench and it's time to take it apart, load it in the car 
and drive it to Andrew's place to see what he thinks about his new toy. But before seeing his reaction, we have to reassemble the workbench. While putting all the parts together, we are talking about the old times. Andrew has helped us with the video shoots and editing from the very first post on our YouTube channel and has been with us every step of the way from the winter shoots to the first project in our workshop. And I'm excited to see him starting his home shop. At this point, there is still a lot of work to be done. However, there is nothing better than being able to make things for your loved ones without leaving the house, especially if you have views like these. Thank you for joining us on the workbench build and I'll see you next time.